Hi everyone, so today we're going to talk about why I started photography. Let's talk about it. So everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Daryl and this channel is all about my journey through photography, both in the film world and in the digital world. Today is a bit of a change of scenery um, for everyone who's been watching before. Usually I'm locked in my bathroom or the lab um, talking about developing film. But today I want to have a kind of more relaxed chat with you all. And as you can tell by the title, I'm going to talk to you a bit about why I started photography and where my progress has taken me so far. So why did I start photography? If I look back at some old photos of when I was younger, um, and went on holiday with my grandparents, I used to try and play around with a camera quite a bit. But from then until now, photography was never really an interest to me. Um, I think it was mainly when my kids were born, um, more so when my daughter was born, because of COVID and everything, I had more time to spend at home. And I realised with her that I had missed out so many moments with my son, because when he was born, I was back at work quite a lot. Um, but with Layla, I got to see a lot of those moments and, and I realised to myself that I need to pick up a camera and try and capture these. One, one of them, when I was researching what kind of camera to get, one that my wife had actually wanted was to get a instant camera, like an Instax or a Polaroid. So the one that I picked up was a One Step Plus. I think in each cartridge of... Um, film you get I think it's either 8 or 12 shots mainly we got this to kind of capture moments and have a picture instantly and they just look like fun little memories that you could put in a scrapbook um, a lot of them are just silly moments like I'll show you this one of me <laughs> I think it says daddy wearing makeup I think Hannah had put Hannah had put makeup on me you also get black and white and black and white really drew an interest to me because it has an almost timeless look to it. The timelessness to them really makes you feel how precious that moment is. But you can see with the instant camera, the quality of the pictures isn't that great. It's more of a, a little wee fun thing for around the holidays and stuff. If it was Christmas time, I would probably pick up another pack of film and take the Polaroid out. So after that, I realized that for one, the Polaroids are very expensive and to the quality of the images isn't the best. So, but I did from that learn that I love black and white pictures. So in my research and on black and white cameras, I kind of like looking at digital and stuff um, and I had watched quite a lot of YouTube videos. I'd actually found that they still made film or you could still buy film. And a lot of the guys on YouTube that I watched like Matt Day and King Gyps and everyone like that. They were all shooting in black and white and these really old film cameras. And that just, it really sparked an interest in me. Now the first film camera that I picked up was a Practica TL3, I believe. Um, I have a video from a while back that I'll link up here that uh, shows you some of my first film cameras. And unfortunately that one had a problem with the wind on mechanism. So each time you put a roll of like 36 in it, you maybe only got 24 because the spacing started to get bigger between each shot. And the one that I have at the minute, which is my favorite, is my Minolta SR1. And I got a um, 50mm 1.7 lens on it. And this is just my favorite film camera at the minute from a manual lens point of view. Now, why I would suggest to anyone to even get a film camera Yes, it's it's vintage and it's it's fun to just sort of mess around with, but shooting a manual camera like that, this is a fully manual camera, there's no battery, there's no light meter, there's nothing in it. It really makes you slow down the process of taking a picture. Like you could have only 36 shots or 24 shots or even less, depending on the format you're shooting in as well, like a medium format. So you really learn to get your, to sort of dial in your settings, so your shutter speed, your aperture, and maybe you need, like, if you're 
don't have a light meter, you're stuck using the Sony 16 row. Um, but luckily you can get light meter apps on your phone or I have a, I bought a Raveni Lab light meter recently, which I'll probably do a video on as well. As I was saying, with the manual film camera, you really learn to appreciate each of your pictures, especially as well with film if you're developing them yourself. It's a really nice process. Like I find developing pictures actually quite relaxing for me. With film, it's expensive and it's not always available. So you have to wait for your new supply to come in. So it's just, it's not always going to be readily available. So the next step for me was to try and get a decent digital camera. Now in saying that, I'll always shoot film. As long as there's film available, I'll always get some film as well. But for a, a possible future side business, working just with film isn't really profitable at the minute. So with uh, choosing a digital camera, um, obviously you can get your, your really expensive brand new cameras at the minute. But I found when researching cameras, you can get very, very good quality cameras that were at a professional grade when they were released, but are still a very good price today. So the one that I um, was drawn to was the Canon 5D, the very first model, or the what you would call the Canon 5D Classic, which you'll have seen a few videos that I've done on. For me, that camera, it just, the sensor, in it is just something special. It has that film-like quality to it as well. So for me, that sensor has a very, very close quality to portrait film. I'll throw up a image that I took with my Canon 5D and also on my Canon EOS 650. That would, so these two shots were taken with the same lens, just one on the 5D and one on portrait. And you can tell me if you can spot the difference between the two. And the 5D, this was £200 when I bought it second hand and the quality of it's just great. I added on a battery grip to it and it just feels like an absolute tank. Like I would, I could drop this and I'd be more scared about breaking my toes than this camera actually breaking. So if you were looking to get into full frame at a very good price, I would definitely go with the Canon 5D. So once I had a decent digital camera, I wanted to practice a bit more with sort of photo shoots so luckily my wife is always up for taking a few photos. She's beautiful and she has her Instagram page so it all works out great. One thing I'd say as well is the, the photography community from what I've experienced is very very helpful and they are easily reached out to if you go on to Facebook or um, Reddit there's loads of groups. On one group I actually met someone local as well and um, he has a lot of experience with photography and they reached out to me to see if I wanted to join them for a sort of taster session to see what it would be like shooting with them on a model shoot and I thought that was great and um, it's something that I needed to try and build a bit more confidence with with working with strangers like for example if I ever wanted to do some kind of side business I'd have to learn to work with other people as well um, and try and pose them and make them feel comfortable in a photo shoot. And the guy that reached out to me, Alistair Prentice, um, he has his own photography page on Facebook and Instagram. If you, I'll leave the links down below. He also does one-to-one -one sessions with people um, to help them progress, um, which is what he's helping me do as well. I learned quite a few things, especially around lighting and composition and hopefully if you look through the photos that I'll show you here, you can kind of see my progression through um, photography. And comment down below guys, if you can see any kind of improvement, I definitely feel like I'm making some improvement. But as I said, I'm only really in the beginning journeys of this and will definitely have more to learn in the years to come. And as I said, this is what this channel is all about. So hopefully you can come with on the journey with me if you're new to photography as well, hopefully these videos can help you as well get started. Like if any of these videos help even one person um, learn something new or motivate them to take on photography, I'd be really happy.
on that shoot with Alistair, I actually, you really learn what it's like working just on the go when you're in a timed situation. And you need to kind of just learn to slow down a bit. I think it's always good to remember to treat your treat your digital camera like it's a film camera. Think about the shot. Think about your composition as if you only have so many shots, which is really good advice that I would give to anyone. But that's about it, guys. Um, it's just a an informal talk about why I started photography and my progress through it so far. I hope you enjoyed the video, guys, and don't forget to leave a like, comment, and if you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you on another video next week. Bye. Thank you.